expecting such a thorough introduction. That was uh, kind of half my presentation. I, I did not expect also to be accused of running a feminine business. <laughs> <laughs> um, but um, thank you for this invitation, uh, Professor Bates and Bruce and uh, Kathleen and everybody else that uh, you know, set this up. Um, I'm a little amused by myself being a guest executive because I feel like I just graduated from here. Um, however, I don't, some of you might know Laura Stutzman here, and her, her dad, Randy, is a good friend of mine. But Laura was born when I was a student here, and now she's a sophomore here. So I guess I have been out a little while. <laughs> um, now, what, whether you're required to be here or you chose to be here tonight, I'm going to try my best not to be, not to be boring. So here's, here's my introduction that hopefully gets your attention. Of the last four weeks of, of my life, uh, I spent one week skiing in British Columbia with, with some of my friends, a week in Florida golfing, and a week in skiing in Vermont with my family and some other families. I own a 10,000 square foot home in Concord, and I paid cash for a couple brand new cars last year. I own a cottage on Lake Winnipesaukee with a brand new boat out front. I, I have a five and a seven year old, and their, their college is already paid for. I give lots of money to my local church and various causes. I have no debt other than some real estate owned by my businesses. This is the most dressed up I ever get, and I do apologize for uh, probably being the least dressed person in the room here. Um, no disrespect to the program here. Um, it's actually part of what I want to, a point I want to get a, get across tonight. Um, plus, my whole industry is based on casual clothing, so I'm kind of, uh, you know, trying to set set the tone and. Um, in my industry also, uh, it's all about casual clothing and even at trade shows and stuff. Uh, business attire means jeans and t-shirt, and that's what I, what I usually wear to work. Now, I work basically part-time at best. Um, I have time, a lot of time for my family and for serving and for, for a lot of fun. I can't get fired. I can't get downsized. Um, and this is, my, this is my product. Nothing high-tech. You know, we sell t-shirts, just lots and lots and lots of them. So how did I get in this position? Um, not by working for a big company. That's the biggest point I want to make tonight. Now, I assume lots of your, I know you have a variety of guests, and um, lots of them probably work for uh, big companies and, and achieved a lot of success by, by climbing that corporate ladder. Um, so there's a lot of different, different ways you can be successful. Um, but I know I'm a lot different than, than those guys, and I'm going to try to tell you different things than, than they will, and hopefully encourage some of you to either work for uh, or own your own small business. Um, Back to how I got in this position. Uh, first of all, it's by God's grace. Um, he's given me way more than I deserve, way more than, than I've worked for, and everything that I have is, is his, and uh, he's entrusted me with it for now, so I'm gonna you know, do my best to, to take care of it. I'm gonna give you a brief, brief history of my career, maybe just fill in a little bit of the, a few of the more details than Professor Bates did. And then I'm gonna finish with uh, kind of a top 12 list of things that I've learned uh, along the way. Um, as a kid, I was uh, always into lots of entrepreneurial ventures, and from selling fishing worms to uh, mowing lawns and shoveling uh, snow and things like that. And like like he said, in junior high, I did learn learn how to screen print shirts and, and really enjoyed it. And uh, through that, I kind of set up a little side business at, at home and, and ended up selling shirts to any organization that I could find that wanted to buy them. I just kind of kept running it as a side business through high school. And even at Houghton, I, I sold them to every organization I, I could and got them you know, with the intramurals and the bookstore. And, and uh, So it was a real, real nice nice side business. I'd go home every every few months and print shirts in my parents' basement and come back. And, and that was kind of my job through Houghton. When I graduated in December of 89, my goal was to work in a ski industry. And I applied to ski areas all, all over New England. and. Uh, a ski area called Gunstock, New Hampshire, hired me and uh, to, uh, with a management job, and so I, I graduated in, in December, so I could uh, a semester early, so I could start my my ski job right at the beginning of ski season. So I moved up there to Gunstock and started uh, uh, by managing the ski rental and repair operations at Gunstock and. Managing, I was the night manager of, a, of their large campground in the summer. I had a staff of about 25 people, and during that time, I learned a lot about managing people. And uh, you know, again, kept doing the, the shirts on the side. Uh, and after two years of full-time year-round work, and the, the shirt business kept growing and just couldn't ignore it. And ended up uh, was able to drop the summer part of my job and work just for the winter winter ski season at the ski 
ski area and do my, do my shirts in the summer. And uh, so I did that for two more years and the shirt business kept growing. So after two years like that, I resigned from my position at Gunstock um, with the intention to go full time. But another different ski area called Waterville Valley Ski Area made me offer that was too good to refuse. They offered me a, a similar job to what I had at Gunstock for the winter, um, but, it, but they offered me a lot more money and a four day work week, which is unheard of in the ski business. And it was just a great situation and great people. So I ended up doing that for the, the ski season for four more seasons while still building the, the shirt thing on the side. And it's during that time that I picked up my, my MBA. Um, so after four years there, um, Waterville Valley offered me a, an even bigger job to oversee uh, five different departments. Uh, but by then, my, my, I, was, I really was ready to, to commit to full-time self-employment. And if I had taken that job, it, you know, I would have lost my cushy schedule and had to do the six or seven day work weeks and really didn't want to give that time commitment. So, so I ended up, uh, you know, that's when I was finally done working and, and committed to, to Shirtmasters. So this was a really safe way for me to start a business because I had some income for part of the year to supplement it. And uh, I never had to just, you know, stop earning money and hope that my business worked because I kind of eased into it over a long period of time. In 1997 is when, when I bought a building in Concord, New Hampshire, where there was very little competition. And I hired my cousin Steve, who was a, an artist. And, and I bought this old building and uh, needed some renovations. And uh, that, was, that was a fun project. And when, we were, when I was done, I had two apartments above the, the shop that I rented out. And the income from the rental apartments more than carried the mortgage on the building. So I had a free, a free place to work for, for a long time. That was, that was a big help to to a new business. Now this building was uh, zoned wrong for my use and it had some parking issues. Uh, so I had to get what's called a variance from the, the city to do, to do my thing there. The variance is basically permission to break the zoning laws and, and do something that's kind of against the rules. But there's a formal process you can go through to, to get that permission. I was so inexperienced, I didn't really know what that meant. But I got the paperwork and filled it out and made my best case why I should be allowed to, to do this. And, uh, and I ended up getting my, my variances for my use and my, my free parking variances uh, by a three to two vote. So I kind of squeaked in there uh, to an ideal situation and, and got that building for almost nothing as a result because nobody else would have even thought to try and, and it looked like a useless building, but it worked out great for me. Um, so that at that time I changed the name of my business to Shirtmasters and, and came up with this logo. And just a brief thing on the, on the side of Shirtmasters, the, the name of my business was Blasco Originals, um, my last name Blasco, and the O on my last name was the O in Originals, and uh, several things. I was tired of getting calls from Mr. Blask, and also <laughs> in my, my MBA class, in the marketing class at the time, we were talking about uh, naming businesses and how ideally they should be short and one word and descriptive if, if possible and tell something about what you do, and nobody knows what a Blasco Original is, but um, so I was kind of thinking about this, I was actually driving uh, outside Los Angeles when I had to come up with a new name and I saw it signed for the Masters College and it just clicked like short masters and so this is what I've had for, for the last 10 years. So after we moved into that, that building we had um, about the next 10 years of uh, steady growth and just kept adding people and equipment as, as the business grew. In uh, 2000 uh, we outgrew that space and it moved leased some space in a business park I uh, got a bigger unit there so that I could automate and bought an automatic press that can print a thousand shirts an hour and that, that really took the, the business to another level. Um, but in a few years we outgrew that space as well and uh, looked to find some more space to, to lease but couldn't find any in the area so I ended up uh, building a brand new building. And this was another another deal. I found some land on a, on a main highway. Uh, this land had been for sale for a long time because it had some wetlands issues and some things about the zoning that made it appear to be a useless property, but with the experience I had gained earlier getting variance, uh, I said, you know, I'm going to try to convince the town to let me build, build a building on this uh, supposedly unbuildable lot. So I put together my case and went before the town. It took eight months, but I convinced them to let me, let me do that. And that worked out great, so I ended, up, I ended up getting that land for almost 